Welcome back to watching film. Now we're going to take a look at the Temple defense. They list themselves as like a 4-3. Uh, I think personnel-wise, um, the outside linebacker, um, number four, Sam Franklin, Florida kid, is really uh, more probably more of a hybrid safety linebacker type player. Uh, I know he played receiver in high school. He's a really good athlete, track guy, all that kind of stuff. Um, so... They're a 4-3, but I think really they're like a 4-2-5, but he's just a he's a hybrid player. He's a strong side backer. He'll play um, out in space. So you can see he's kind of here. You'll see him to the field a lot. Um, but they have a lot of kind of versatile players. But typically, even front team, I think usually over front. So three tech and a one tech. Um, it's not too dissimilar to what we saw a couple weeks ago from ECU. So think kind of similar to that front structure wise. Uh, they like to play a lot of two high. So two high safeties. They'll do different things out of it. They'll play, uh, looks like cover two, quarters, Tampa two. They'll even roll to play some three, roll to play some man. Um, they blitz a little bit, but nothing. I haven't seen anything. And like I always caution on these, uh, I'm not. I don't have coaches' film. I'm watching YouTube uploads of TV copies, um, so I don't see every play. But what I've seen is nothing really exotic, uh, blitzing wise. But they will bring some five and six man, seven man pressures. But nothing crazy. There's not a bunch of craziness like we saw from Wisconsin, SMU, uh, and Navy earlier in the year. A little bit more like ECU where they're going to play kind of a, a base defense and make you beat them. But So let's kind of go through. They have, they're have they pretty good up front. They get to the passer pretty well. So here's kind of just them rushing four here, playing uh, two high coverage. You can kind of see this against Memphis. They add on a backer. And this is kind of one of, this is kind of the reason they – beat Memphis. You kind of look at their last three games. You, they beat Memphis, who we all saw against SMU last weekend. They beat Memphis. Then they come out and get waxed by SMU and, and UCF. So you're kind of thinking, what's going on? Uh, they were plus two in the turnover battle. So linebacker kind of adds on. And then the end here just wins one-on-one. -on -one. So that's going to be they can get pressure with four, so they don't need a blitz. They can get pressure with these guys up here. And the quarterback doesn't take care of the ball. Stuff like this can happen. And there's that Florida kid, Sam Franklin, taking it down the sideline. So, again, here's uh, – again, they only rush four here. This is against 12 personnel look. So you got a tight end staying in the block here. You have a tight end kind of check release in here. But there's a kind of a safety that's kind of at the line of scrimmage, but he's not really rushing. So they're really rushing four again, and they're able to get pressure again without having to bring a blitz. So that's something that USF's going to have to be wary of. If you're able to get pressure without blitzing, now you can play all kinds of coverage behind it, and they do like to mix up their coverages. So here's a look at them playing – you know, showing too high. Could they be playing a quarters coverage? Could they be rolling to three? You know, they'll kind of play different stuff. But again, up front, they're getting off blocks. We remember, I, you, if you recall, last week we talked about ECU taking on pullers and how their ends were trying to avoid and run around the puller and, and not initiate contact. Watch. Watch this end take on the puller here. He kind of stands firm. Doesn't blow him up, but he also doesn't try to avoid him, right? Then you got linebacker filling. They have experienced linebackers that have been playing for them for a long time. Phil, make a play. So you just kind of look at, I think they're playing their quarters look, where I think he's got eyes on two. Eyes on two. This is giving them some problems. They like to play this. It could be a version of two, but these guys end up carrying. They could have eyes on two, so it could be two read, really. 
to where everyone's got eyes on two. If he gets vertical, I'll kind of fall back underneath it. If he goes to the flat right now, I can jump up and take it. So this could be a version of two read, which it probably is down here. But the safety's got eyes on two and it's kind of responsible for two. And then corner does a good job finding the ball, knocking it away. So you're going to see a bunch of different. So that's kind of a more of a quarters or possibly a two read look there. And then here you got kind of the old school, it looks like the old school Tampa 2. This is, if you notice time on the clock here, this is 34 seconds left in the second quarter. But they have run this, they have run this defense, and I'll show you another example, um, not in two minute and not on third or fourth down. They've kind of run this in different spots. They like it on, I've seen them run sim something similar on third and longs, but They'll run this to the field too. So Tampa two, you got two high. And then the middle linebacker is going to run down the center of the field, which is kind of, for instance, if you ran a go route here and a go route here, and these guys are both playing deep half, well, they'd have to take deep half, right? That guy's in my deep half. That guy's in my deep half. And most teams, a lot of teams will try to run that down the middle in this vacated area. Tampa 2 that was popularized by Derek Brooks and Tony Dungy's Tampa Bay Bucks defense runs that middle linebacker down the middle of the field. So if you try to throw it in that hole, and this is what uh, Navy got the interception on Jordan McLeod before the half at Navy. They ran what looked like to be like a Tampa 2 type look. SMU just takes in front of the defense, but they're giving that up because it's the end of the half. But here's another kind of look at it. Um, in the red zone here. They might be running some type of trap down here, or maybe he's trying to trap maybe a slant or something, but you'll see he's opening up. He's kind of squatting, and the middle linebacker is getting out of there. If he's coming in here like this, you can assume the safety is getting over the top here. So the linebacker is getting out of there. You can see he's going to ma end up matching with him here to try to take away this throw. But again, the backfield action could be an RPO backfield action gets off, gets off a block here. So they're not, they're, they're pretty good up front. They're not uh, a bunch of slugs up there. They can get off the ball and get off blocks and make plays in the backfield. But on the back end there, it looks like to be like a Tampa two type look. So here's another variation. So when you're playing, they showed this a few times. When you want to play too high, right, there's some problems that come with playing too high. But if you want to play too high and teams want to put three out here, and really if you count the back, it could be four potential receivers. Uh, we talked about this previously is you want to play too high. You know, you can play some type of quarter stuff. But if you're, you know, let's say one and two are eating up here, you know, who's got kind of three right down there? So what some teams will do is we call it playing um, where I was before. They called it triangle. He'll kind of have, and you can see his eyes kind of back this way. He'll have eyes on three looking for a crossing route or something down the middle, and he'll be able to jump it. Now, when you have that, that leaves you one on one outside. So if I do play this triangle, so if I got if I got this safety looking for backside number three, and they can play it however they want here. You can main it up or you could have, play it like two reads so where I got eyes on two. They were kind of playing that and then working backside to three. You can play it, but it leaves you one-on-one -on -one out here. But So that's what I think they do to a three-by-one, especially with the back to the side. So it's really like it could be a four-by-one. You see the safety kind of shift towards the three-receiver side. And here is... So here's more of a... This is a kind of an interesting look right here. Here's more of an odd front look. But it's really... It's, you know... 
It looks kind of like that tight front we saw earlier in the year a little bit, but he's really, he's outside the tackle. He's just inside the tackle. He's almost like a three tech. He's looks like he's shaded. He, I don't know. He may be head up, but then, you know, either one of these guys could be counted as a, as a stand up end. So it looks like SMU doesn't account for him and he comes on a delay and gets pressure. So again, there's pressure with four. So even though you got the one on one up here, you're not able to get the ball off because they bring pressure with four. So here's kind of another look at them running triangle. This is where it can get you caught up though. I'm look I got eyes here. So I'm looking over here and I get a play action fake. I should let it run. So I step up, but like we said, backside, that means you're one on one. So you can't lose backside. So I'm guessing with If they show run here, I'm guessing he's supposed to get depth now. The linebacker does a good job of trying to get depth after seeing it and trying to run underneath it, but you're kind of left with that one-on-one -on -one outside. So that's what if USF gets in some three-by-ones and maybe your backside would probably be a guy like St. Felix. He wins one-on-one -on -one a couple of times. Now you can generate some big plays in the passing game if you protect. And you'll see here, the pocket is getting pushed back here. You know, this is where they start about on the 40 was where the pocket begins. Let's see where it gets pushed to. And this is with a seven man protection. So right here, that's a double team getting pushed in the quarterback's lap. So like I said, Temple's got a pretty good defensive line, but there are plays to be made here. So here's another kind of, they'll show too high and then they'll kind of displace a little bit. So he'll kind of drop back, he'll roll up a little bit, and then at the snap, deep third, deep third, deep third, almost like they're rolling to a cover three look. Get the ball out, they rally make a tackle. The ball squirts out there, but he's rolled down. But that's just showing too high, rolling to three. So here's another one with a show too high. And it looks like they're rolling to three. You got corners bailing. There's a safety off screen here. He's rolling towards the middle of the field there. He's coming down. Again, you got a stand up end here into the boundary. But here's one thing that can give you problems if you want to stay too high. So I had old line coaches that used to tell the offensive linemen that if anybody wants to stay too high on you with too high safeties, it's a spit in your face because they don't think you can run the ball. Because it's taking another player out of the box. Now with the way people play quarters and things like that now, that's kind of changed a little bit, but there's still something to that. So right here, you got a tight end, a back, and a quarterback. Right, so you got six on the line of scrimmage, and now you only have a six-man box. And with the quarterback and the back here, you could read somebody, so you really have a numbers advantage in the box on offense. They pull somebody, and now there's a big hole. If you make that safety miss, it's a touchdown. You run them over to try to set the tone, I suppose. You get a first down. But still, if they, if this is if they want to stay too high which they kind of, it's like a semi roll here late, but it could just be quarters and he's just playing flat footed, but I don't think so the way these guys are dropping. So he, if you want to stay too high, even if you roll, if you're not rolling down and getting in the run game, you know, you could be in trouble if you only put six men in the box when the tight end, when the, in 11 personnel. They're also kind of, here they show one high he kind of rolls down here and he's rolling back to the middle of the field it's almost like rolling to man memphis runs a really cool rpo here to take advantage of it reading that end quarterback pulls it makes a throw out there so they'll roll to man a little bit and this could be a similar thing where 
it looks like too high, and then he's starting to roll to the middle of the field before the snap. Post snap, he rolls. He maybe stays flat footed, and it looks like he's playing possibly man coverage. And they're able to kind of wrap this up a little bit in the run game. So, like I said, there's problems here. They have him, it seems to be, following the tight end. So, if they're, they are playing a version of quarters, possibly. Safety has eyes on two. Two would be the tight end. It's like a, a fullback here, like a sniffer tight end. So, he goes to follow him, looking like he's going to run slices. a really cool play design uh, by UCF. It's basically uh, same side counter. So he makes it looks like he's running a split zone, and he's actually going to come back. You're going to get a kick out here. He's going to come back inside. And so they're going to end up running a counter, but it just makes it look like split zone, and it's from the same side. It's a really interesting play. But this happens a lot to Temple, where the safeties kind of get themselves out of position. So he overplays the slice and opens up a huge hole. Right there, safety should be coming to fill right here. Safety should be coming in right here to fill and kill this play. He's over pursued it, and now you get a big play. So there's a lot of instances like this where they've given up some big play, even though their numbers are pretty good defensively. They will, they do have the tendency to give up a big play here and there. Here's another one again. They're almost, you know, they got they got inside and out on number two here. They got eyes on two here. So right here, it's one-on-one. -on -one. That's great, but if you can't win one-on-one, -on -one, this is what happens. And now we all saw these guys in person. They're pretty good. That's uh, Roberson. But still, it's one-on-one -on -one right there. You win. You're putting your corner in a tough position, and he, he hasn't had the greatest of years. Uh, he especially struggled in this game here. So here's another look at it. So another quarters look. Where he's going to come up in front of him. It's a play we talked about at the beginning of the year, kind of Mills or something similar, where he's going to come up on the corner here. I'm sorry. It's a. Uh, and hold him, and then actually backside because they're playing this kind of triangle look. Looking over here, they're going to come to the post. So, kind of a similar idea. Uh, not quite Mills. I was thinking about another play here, but. So he's playing that triangle look. He vacates because he's looking for number three here. All right, his eyes are over here. Again, now you are one on one with a lot of field to work with over here. You don't win one on one, this is what happens on defense. You win one on one on offense, this is what happens. And now here's the one that's more like Mills here. Again, the corner ends up making a pretty good play on this one, I think. But here, quarter, I, my eyes are on number two. Here's number two, number one, number one. Run the in here. Drives on it because that's his man. And now look at the space out here. Let him run to it. And here the corner makes a great play to knock it out. But offensively, this is exactly what you're hoping to get right here when you call this play. I want the safety to bite up, and I get my shot over the top to one of my one of my good receivers out here. But great play by the corner. So they're not totally devoid of playmakers on defense, but this this is a pretty good play right there. But you can see there's holes in the defense here. So this is another version. It looks like they roll into maybe man coverage, and they lose the one-on-one -on -one battle. So right there, roll to man, get the ball out. You see with this roll to man is really, I'm bringing the safety in here too. So we're bringing some pressure here. All right, if they're going to roll to main coverage, they're probably just not going to have guys sit here. Somebody's coming. So on this one, it's a safety. Ends up blitzing. They pick it up pretty well. And that's what happens if you lose the main coverage.
here again is a roll, show two high and roll. And not great safety play, really. But if you get caught out, like the linebackers here kind of get caught out. Looks like they have a blitz called. They pick it up. Good run by the back. And now the safeties, I mean, they run into each other. And he goes up for a touchdown here. So if you are going to roll to man, or you're going to roll with some kind of pressure, you got to get there. Now here's another thing they did in the red zone a few times. Where they... They really kind of squatted on these on inside routes by the number one receiver. So you watch these guys, watch their kind of bodies. Watch how they turn to try to kind of jump underneath anything coming inside or to prevent them from coming inside. You see here, he's preventing him from coming inside. And it looks like they got outside. So it looks like he's playing outside. He's playing inside on that. And then down here. He's passing it off. Ends up being a long throw. That doesn't really amount to much. So there's kind of another wrinkle. And, and here's kind of the blitz they like to do. So here's a blitz they'll like to bring. So here they're bringing, they're bringing six. Not more than you got protecting, but they're just try to... All right, try to open it up here there and then bring two on one in here so overloading that side you got the ball out of your hand but it's a long throw incomplete pass so here's something they'll do on third and long sometimes is they'll get they'll take these backers so this is a linebacker This is a linebacker. They'll take them both out of the box, so they'll leave themselves with a five-man box kind of being daring you to run a little bit on third and nine. They'll keep keep the two high safeties. Five-man box, go ahead and run. UCF obliges here, but their defensive line gets off the block and rips the ball out. So they're going to kind of – dare you maybe on some third and long so go ahead and we'll let you run it and see if see if you'll take them up on that so that's kind of another wrinkle they throw in on third downs here's something that looks like a funky version of tampa too um this is another third down defense but you have a corner here that's one safety that's the outside backer you have the corner that's the middle linebacker and you have some type of safety over here, I'm assuming. Because right now you got 40 linemen, three linebackers, four DBs. You can only see one, two, three of them. So the safety's off screen. So if the snap, he starts running the pipe like it's Tampa 2. The corner's getting to deep half. Down here, he's playing more of a hard kind of flat technique. So he's playing more like a cover 2. So this could be like a funky version, uh, another funky version of Tampa 2. But again, let's look up front. Stand up in, but he's still an end. Tackle whiffs, and I'm able to get pressure with four guys. So being able to get pressure with those four guys really allows them to play these funky kind of coverages. Because if I'm winning with four... Then I don't need to rush more. That's the that's the best thing I can do. Um, so to end here, let's look at uh, USF has been getting in twelve personnel quite a bit and doing some interesting things. So Memphis gotten some similar looks uh, against Temple. So we're gonna just kind of look at it and see how they played it. So this is twelve personnel with a tight end here, a tight end here. And two receivers that side. So we saw 
USF do this against ECU with some really good success. Again, if it's an over front team, you got the three here, the one here. There's your big bubble to run to, which I'd imagine um, if they get the same look, USF will try to take advantage of that bubble again right here. This big two gaps open right there. But here's how they played it. So backers here, corners out over number one. They have a safety over top of number two here. So you got the safety on top of him deep, linebacker inside, uh, linebacker, linebacker. Here's the corners up as the force player. And you got a safety in the box, or they could even exchange that and have a safety up the line of scrimmage if he's more comfortable in the corner playing off here. But functionally. So here they decide to bring the backside safety. But that's kind of the structure you're going to get. I think we get a better look at it here coming up. So corners playing off up top and bailing. They just take the speed out for nine yards. Against an evened up look here. So again, tight end. Tight end. Receiver. One receiver on either side, so it's evened up. Now you have two safeties. They're playing a little bit lower. Obviously, and then three backers in the box. So you're getting a true like four three look here. Uh, but again, one tech here, a little bubble there. So it looks like they're playing quarters. So we're eyes on two, eyes on two. Almost like man quarters. So outside of playing man. Uh watch the kind of creative play calling here. If you know they're gonna take number two. Well, then you could sneak and you run some routes to kind of open those safeties up. Well, now I can sneak the back down the middle here. So here's a little wrinkle. Not too dissimilar to what USF ran against the Navy that was dropped um, to Sands. They kind of ran him up the seam uh, when Navy was kind of widening out those safeties like that. So um, I don't know if you'll see something like this on Thursday, but you could. This, this is something USF has kind of done just out of a different formation, different look. Then finally, just so you can get a better look at, again, 12 personnel. Here's a tight end. Tight end. Receiver one, receiver two. So this is what you're going to play. Here's a safety corner. Linebacker, 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 safety corner. So that's what you're going to get if you get in that funky look. And there is some spots to run the ball in this look there's some kind of um you know depending on what you think about this guy on the edge you can run right at him softer edge on this side uh you got a corner here maybe you want to run at him um there's some there's some spots to run the ball in this look so we'll see if usf wants to get back in that look like they did with some success against ecu but either way um they're up for a challenge. Temple is a pretty good defense, especially uh, statistically. Uh, pretty good against the run, pretty good against the pass. only thing they don't do great is turn you over, but they do it a pretty decent clip. Their offense just unfortunately turns the ball over a lot too, so their turnover margin isn't great. But they are really good on third downs. Um, I think it's about like a 33%. So, and USF has struggled to convert on third down offensively. They've gotten much better the last four or five games, but hopefully you don't see that kind of – early season struggle come back if you do you know then you could be in for a long night but there's definitely the uh you definitely have the ability there to make some plays but you're gonna have to play sound because this is not a bad defense they're pretty good they're pretty talented um and tough and versatile so you'll have the ability to make plays you'll have the opportunities but will you be able to take advantage of those opportunities we'll find that out uh on national tv coming up here soon